Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show for you today. We're going to have Dr. Harold Newcomb here with us, and we're going to talk about ticks and how they have some sort of impact on your cattle. We're glad that you're watching the show. We'll be right back. Bovalis Nasalgen 3 offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, PI3, and BRSV. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose Bovalis Nasalgen 3 PMH, the first and only intranasal that protects against viral and bacterial pneumonia. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson and here with me today is Dr. Harold Newcomb. He is a veterinarian from Batesville, Mississippi. He is tech services veterinarian for Merck Animal Health. Um, I tell you, I, that meeting y'all did in Mississippi was so much fun. Well, good. good. That We're was glad you could come down. That was some of the, I, I told people, I said, if you want practical take home information, that I, I've used more stuff from that meeting, that Southeast Stalker meeting that y'all did is just tremendous. Well, thank you. Nice. So, um, we're going to talk about ticks. Nobody likes them, and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they cause trouble, but uh, they can cause some pretty serious damage. Yeah, the, the thing about ticks is, you know, they, they carry a bunch of different diseases, but if you, if you look, first just look at the overall what they're doing to the animals, and they're decreasing production, okay, because that animal is irritating, from the bites of the tick, they, they also suck blood, so they're more likely they're going to be anemic. So what you're going to basically start seeing is, besides the ticks, you'll see production go down, whether it be reproduction, milk production, average data gain. You're going to see some sort of loss from a tick infestation. And, we, and when we see tick infestation, sometimes we're not just talking about, you know, like you or me, you find a, a tick on you. We're talking about some of these cattle can get them in their ears and, and around their head and their neck and, and, and armpits and different places and really pack them in. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on which tick that, that they've got. But I mean, obviously that ear tick in parts of the country can be very serious because it will mess with the ear canal. It, it, it'll make them lose balance. It, you know, so it, it can really be a serious deal for, for those guys. If you're, you know, sort of in our neck of the woods in the South, it's going to be the, the Gulf Coast tick, the Lone Star tick, okay? And then if you're over on the East Coast and it's working its way west, you've got to worry about the Asian Longhorn tick. If you're down on South Texas, in that part of the world, it's the cattle fever tick. Yeah, probably the easiest way, and, and you said this about talking about uh, resistant parasites, the best way to get them to go from one area to another is is on four legs and in a trailer. Exactly. I mean, if, if we look at the Asian longhorn tick, we'll talk about that one for just a minute. That, that tick came into New Jersey. And since it's been here, and I don't know, 2017, 18, somewhere along in there, anyway, that tick has moved into around 20 states, okay? And how did it get there? It didn't crawl. It was transported on animals. Yep. Okay. And so when you buy in, or when you buy an animal, say a bull, if you were buying it out of the East, you need to make sure that you inspect those animals very closely and probably treat them for ticks. Yep. And, and, you know, it's, it's no different than, than when we transport, uh, anaplasmosis or, you know, even West Nile virus came on an airplane, you know, mosquitoes on an airplane and, and things of that nature. But, 
But when we have people transporting cattle the way that they do today, across state lines into different pastures, this is something that we're going to have to take more and more uh, concern about. Yeah, you're going to have to take, you know, a lot, you've got to pay a lot more attention to what what's going on. I mean, if you looked at the Asian longhorn tick, you know, it was over on the East Coast, but it got into Tennessee, and Tennessee thought they'd put up the firewall, but they found the tick about 100 or 150 miles southwest of where they thought that they would originally find it, and it was just four wheels brought it in. Yep. Okay. Well, this is going to be some interesting information, uh, something that will make you sit up and, and probably have itch or two. Um, but we're going to talk about ticks more with Harold Newcomb when we come back. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Supremo, the fast that lasts. Supremo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Supremo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Zuprevo.com. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple. You fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or a nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for it by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part. From the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver. You rely on them to get their job done right and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Harold Newcomb, who's a veterinarian and he is a technical services veterinarian from Merck Animal Health. Um, he has been a practitioner of veterinary medicine out of Batesville, Mississippi, and a cattle producer himself. We're talking about ticks, and the, the one that keeps catching my attention is that Asian, uh, Asian longhorn, longhorn tick yeah. um, and, and how that's spreading, and what does it do? Well, the Asian longhorn tick, there's several interesting things about it. Probably one of the first and most interesting things is every tick in the United States that they found that is an Asian longhorn tick is a female. So we've got asexual reproduction going on, okay? <laughs> the other interesting thing about it is it's really a three-host tick, but you will find all three stages on one animal. And those ticks, you will find them basically at the wood's edge, high grass, this type of thing. So a lot of the control is focused not only just the animal with the use of chemicals, but it's also trying to keep the environment in check where those ticks don't have those areas to 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 hide in. Gotcha, gotcha. So so as that uh, tick is is spreading, what's the what are some of the things that it causes? All right. So well, obviously it'll cause blood loss, but the the biggest thing that it's caused now that it was introduced in the United States is a, is a disease called Tyleria. Okay. Tyleria looks a lot like anaplasmosis, except for there is no treatment for it or no, let's say, shall we say, acceptable treatment. Right. Okay. There will be some death loss with it. Some animals will live through it. But the problem would be is, so I'm a purebred producer on the East Coast. My herd got some of these ticks. And maybe my bulls turned up positive for Tyleria. Well, all right, he lived through it. I'm thinking everything's okay, but that bull is a lifetime carrier of this now so when i take him from somewhere on the east coast and put him someplace in the south 
am I infecting other ticks that are going to infect right. my cow? That's the real issue with that longhorn tick, or one of the real issues. So obviously we don't want to have that tick propagated, but now when it's causing this kind of disease with no treatment, um, you know, it's going to cause some major issues. It's going to cause some major issues, and as it makes its way across the United States, I mean, it started in New Jersey, and we've seen it as far west as Arkansas. And it, and it will go west of there. Well, you know, that that is probably open for debate now. I mean, I've seen several different thoughts and, and, and about it. I mean, it just depends on the environment, and I don't think we know enough about that tick and the environment that it really likes. You get too far north, it may be too cold. You get too far south, it may get too hot. You get too far west, it may be too dry. It just is going to take time to tell. But what is evident is that the spread of that tick is probably going to come from transportation of these animals. Yeah. And so when we buy animals, or especially bulls, or replacement heifers, we need to be sure that we're actually checking for those, t or checking for all ticks, right? And it may be that we need to go ahead and just treat them for ticks up front. Perfect. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some other different types of ticks and problems that are, they're, they're creating, and then we'll wrap up with how you're going to treat them. Um, you're watching Doc Talk, and we're glad you joined us. Bovilus Nasal Gen 3 offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, PI3, and BRSV. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose Bovilus Nasal Gen 3 PMH, the first and only intranasal that protects against viral and bacterial pneumonia. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple. You fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or a nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for it by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. When it comes to treating BRD, you want a product that you can count on to get the job done at an affordable price. Macrosyn by Bimeda delivers on both. A straight shooting, no BS to lathromycin that does what it's supposed to do. End of story. You don't need to take our word for it though. Go to macrosyn.com for customer testimonials and head-to-head -head trial results. For your cattle and your bottom line, choose Macrosyn. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Harold Newcomb. He is a technical services veterinarian with Merck Animal Health. He is uh, also a veterinarian uh, and cattle producer out of Batesville, Mississippi. We're talking about ticks. And there's basically two others, but this the the tick fever or the fever the cattle fever, fever tick, tick yeah is is something we probably need to visit about yeah because it it would be it would carry babesiosis and there's been an eradication program in that thing since the early 1900s and they have eradicated that particular tick from the United States but it's a diligent battle that's fought down there on the Texas Mexico border because of all the wildlife that can cross that can carry that tick, especially some of the wild animals, the, the Nia guy they're coming over, okay? But the deal is, and I don't know that people really understand how important that is because babesiosis would, would absolutely wreck the cattle industry in the United States, okay? Right. So, you know, we don't think a lot about that tick because they do such a good job, but we probably ought to step back and, and maybe say, Thank you for that particular government program because it's done a lot of good <laughs> yeah. for the producers yeah. in the United Sounds States. Sounds like though we need to finish the wall <laughs> and keep the wildlife from scrambling back and forth. Well, you know, if you go along the border down there, there are 
permanent quarantine counties. Okay. okay. And so they do have sort of a wall set up. Okay. But it's just a diligent fight every day to make sure nothing creeps through the cracks. Yep. It's amazing. And then the, the other one that kind of caught me off guard because we hadn't seen it, but we had a guy with a bunch of dropped ears on cattle up in Kansas. And we went out there I and mean, we just automatically said, oh, it's mycoplasma. You know, you see a dropped ear, it's my, you know, ear yeah. infection. Don't worry about it. Just treat them with them. And lo and behold, the ear was full of full ticks. ticks. Yeah. And uh, that, that would be the ear tick. Uh, that particular tick will get down into the ear canal and it can, it can cause some major irritation to those cattle with them rubbing, shaking their head, trying to get the things out. And, the, and that, you know, they can live for several, you know, really couple of months or better so the question then becomes is how do you go about getting rid of them well fortunately that tick is pretty susceptible to about any ear tag uh the the you know in the, basically the three chemical classes that we have are the organophosphates the pyrethroids and the macrocyclactones okay those ticks are pretty well susceptible to all any three of those classes so generally you know, uh, uh, an ear tag that that would have, um, say, a macrocyclactone or an ivermectin type tag, or organophosphate or a pyrethroid tag should get you out of the woods with that. Perfect. That uh, you know, we were seeing them not this specific tick, but even in our horses. Yes. Uh, and and if you think it's hard to get a tick off of off of a horse anywhere try to dig ticks deep, out, deep of out of the ears of a horse yeah but that that's where a good dose of ivermectin deworming yep would probably help you out with that absolutely and uh, you know i did find some some ear grease or something that was on that it's amazing when you have a problem it's amazing what you can find uh, for an answer when you start looking <laughs> yeah when you start looking but uh, hey we're going to take a break with dr nuke when we come back we're going to talk about some of the treatments for the different ticks uh you're watching doc talk and we're glad you joined us the alertness on farm pregnancy test for us has been unbelievable time saver because we can do it whenever we want. My favorite part about Alertus on Farm, we can get results fast. You know, in 20 minutes, you know whether that cow goes to pasture A, B, or C. It's just very efficient. It's gonna make you a lot of money. You're not gonna have open cows standing there all winter looking at you, and you can do it on your time. As a stocker operator, your job is to turn forage into profit. With the right implant, you can. Revlor G improves grazing performance for 150 days, the same length as the typical grazing period. And it's dosed for stalker's maturity levels, adding up to an extra 23 pounds. See why Revlor G is the number one choice in stalker implants at RevlorG.com. A withdrawal period has not been established in pre-ruminating calves. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Harold Newcomb, who's a veterinarian and he's a tech services veterinarian for Merck Animal Health. Thanks for being on the show. Glad to be here. It's always fun to have you here and, and talk about things. And we're talking about ticks and, and you talked about treating them. And so different ticks have different mechanisms and different places they live and where they attach. And so it probably lends itself to different treatments. Well, it, it does. But I mean, look, basically we're talking about ear tags, sprays, and then dipping. Okay. Yep. Uh, Nobody dips anymore much except for as those animals are coming across the border, those, right. those dip bats, okay? Those generally are some form of an organophosphate. Most all those animals are treated down there with some sort of macrocyclactone. But, you know, like I said on the ear tick, most ear tags will work on that. Uh, so it's really a combination. If you're going to spray, you need to wet down the entire animal. And then, you know, you really need to look for 
places where the ticks tend to congregate, which would be the brisket up under the front legs, the back legs, scrotums on the bulls, this type of thing. So you want to look there, and that's where you want to make sure that those animals actually get treated. Right. Well, it's and you know it's it's no different than the it, you know lice and all the different types of external parasites that we deal with. It's this is not a one and done. No, it's it's, game. it's, it's a not constant. One, it, it's a constant battle, but there's a seasonality to it. Okay, and it depends on really where you are in the United States. I mean, if you're looking, say, like at the Gulf Coast and Lone Star Tick, that's probably more of a spring summer tick for us. Yeah. Okay. The the Asian longhorn tick really doesn't have a seasonality to it. I don't think. I think that tick is pretty much out and about most of the time. Everybody wants to know well, what time of year do I need to be looking for? Anytime you see ticks, you got issues, right? Because well, of the diseases that they can transmit. And then we see things where we burn pastures and don't burn draws. Yeah, you, you, you just, just put them, them all in the draw, and then when it gets hot. All the cattle are in the trees right. in the draw. That's right. So you just multiplied your problem. Right. It's the deal of using common sense along with the chemicals. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, they're they're easier to kill than I thought they were going to be when when we started visiting. Because I don't I don't think I don't think I feel like anything kills them, but they, obviously it does. Well, I, yeah. I mean, it does. There there is some resistance issues in ticks, but we don't see a lot of resistance issues in the United States. Most of that is would be stuff coming from Mexico. Okay. Sure. And, and especially with that, that cattle fever tick program, they really do a pretty good job of checking those animals and keeping that tick in check down below the border. Yep. So if you had something to just kind of give a wrap up or some advice for someone when you're just talking about ticks, is it, you know, if you're, if I'm buying cattle, what, what if, I? if you're buying cattle, you want to inspect, you want to look, probably want to ask the, the, uh, the, the producer or, or, or the seller, the breeder, you know, have you had some tick problems before? <laughs> Is there any history of the Asian longhorn tick around here? Okay. Because the Tyleria deal, it, it, it's real and it could be a major issue. And it's going to be one that is probably bought and brought to you. you you're probably going to buy that problem and bring it in. Okay. Yep. Whether it be with the tick or it be with an animal that's already been exposed to that disease and has recovered. Perfect. Great show. Great information. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you all watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to find out what we do, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Always work with your local veterinarian. With Dr. Harold Newcomb, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and we'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. It's the drive, the passion, the unbridled desire to be the world's greatest. It's the early mornings, late nights, and every hour in between spent grooming the next generation of champions. We're with you through the best times and the tough times. Seeing your horses through inevitable health scares and setbacks you never saw coming. Everything they deserve is here, delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. We are a start to finish yard, bring them in at 500 pounds and finish them out to 14 to 1500 pounds. Max capacity is about 15,000. We begin with the end in mind, which that means it starts from day one coming off the truck. The most stressful part of the life cycle of a calf is the ride here, whether it's a two hour ride or it's a 24 hour ride. I mean, we kind of treat everything like the higher risk cattle. We always have somebody right there at the loadout, pinning cattle, getting counts on cattle. It's just consistently doing the little things right, whether it's clean water, fresh feed, clean pen, clean bunk apron. We try to do the little things right, whether it's from low stress cattle handling, animal welfare, how we work with the cattle every single day. You know, that's something we really focus on. Our cowboys work directly with our veterinarians. You know, there's, and our guys, they do a great job. Give them a few days to kind of acclimate, settle down a little bit. That gives us a period what we know what we're working with and how we're gonna handle them at the shoot when we come to process them. 
we don't process till day 10, 14 or so. And we found better luck with that just because we know what we're working with. And it seems like if they're gonna fall apart on you or you know, start having some BRD issues, you'll find it within that 10 to 14 day period. And Mother Nature, as we know it, it, it can throw a curveball at us anytime. So you never want to get comfortable. And we're using a stimulator now for a vaccine and they don't go through a harsh sweat or anything. Blends mix is really nice. Cattle look great afterwards and every day is a challenge. But it's nice knowing that we can rely on a, a good vaccine kind of protect us against what mother nature or any stressors that they throw at us. This industry, it, it takes everybody, uh, whether it's working with the nutritionist, it's cowboys working with the veterinarians, everybody plays a part and uh, we expect them to do their jobs but also we expect you know the the drugs or what we put into the cattle to do their job too and I think these Bimeta products, they're proven that they're doing the job for us.